another thing about the bog is because it's on a lake, the ground is like moving underneath us. So, uh, we're out on the beach today. Uh, <laughs> so last week I started a, a course, it's like a little 12 week course called uh, Reading Your Own Landscape. And today we're on our first little field trip and we've been taken out to the beach. And uh, we're actually with a geologist called Dr. Eamon Doyle and he's, he's meant to be pretty awesome. So we're just gonna go over and uh, listen to what he has to say. Okay, everyone's starting to gather. We're just kind of waiting, but I think, uh, I think it's time. When these rocks, these rocks were buried at, at depth. So they might have been buried a, a kilometre underneath the surface or more. Mm -hmm. um, there's evidence to say they were buried like three or four kilometres down, but they were buried at some depth. But the rocks were hard at the time. They weren't buried deep enough so that they were becoming soft with the, like the mantle. Mm. So they were subject to fracturing. So when these continents collided, the rocks fractured. But when you fracture something, you make a little gap in the rock. Nature hates a vacuum. So fluids that are buried at depth will actually f rush up and fill that fracture. And those fluids usually carry some minerals in them, depending on where they're coming from. And the rocks down at depth, and the rocks are flowing through a lot of quartz, them, so they're going to pick up quartz. And then when they're in, the fluids are in that gap then, those crystals have time to grow. And they grow and they fill the gaps, and that's where you get these purer quartz crystals like this in there. Uh, sometimes you can get really nice big quartz crystals. If you look here, you can see layer upon layer upon layer. And if you look up close, you can see how thin those layers are. And each of those layers, again, is an event, is something, a flood, a storm, washing sediment out, and then being de depositing that layer. It spreads out and deposits the sand evenly over a fairly broad area. And you can get thin layers or thick layers, depending on how much sediment has been deposited. And if we walk up along here, again, we see these layers, 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 and then we see more of this. So yeah, we've got our Layers, layers, layers here underneath it, layers here on top of it, and in fact even here to one side we've got the layers. So everything is nice and normal here, and then here something, something has gone wrong or something is different. Then have a close look and see if you can find any fossils. <coughs> Just looking in here now, we seem to have some trace fossils in here. The conditions aren't great, the light isn't ideal, but there are trace fossils here. Um, again, we're not seeing body fossils, we call them shelly fossils. You get enough organic matter trapped in the sediment and it gets cooked to a certain temperature and pressure it can turn into oil if it's the right kind of organic matter in the first place if it's plant material it'll never turn into oil it can turn into coal um, or gas so this is a line of yes, yes. because the beds have been squashed this yes. when this thing happens it forms earthquakes so basically you're looking at a fossilized yeah. earthquake here because when this was being the continents were colliding very much like now India is crashing up into China if you can picture the map of the world now India it's stuck onto Asia there um, it is moving north and it's crashing into China basically Mongolia and as it crashes in it's crumpling up the rocks and forming the Himalaya mountains mm. this is a mini version of that it's forcing the rocks and the rocks then shatter they break <laughs> And it's that break in the rocks that gives you the earthquakes. And it can happen multiple times on the same fault. So once you get a line of weakness, generally you're going to get more earthquakes along that fault as the fault develops. And that's what we have here. So everyone's heading off. Well, not heading off, but we're going to another place. How cool is this though? This is like straight out of Game of Thrones. You could you could use this as a location in a film easily. Like easy, really easily. You could use this as an awesome location in a film. And I think I might, I think I might in the future because it's just epic. And here we see it again here. This is that fault, the same fault that's running through there. And that it ruptured here. Some of the group are gone over to see a sand volcano, which I wanted to see, but I thought that it was just over the mound there. <laughs> and I'm about halfway and I'm kind of stuck on these rocks because they're extremely slippery. Like, 
super super slippery so I'm kind of paranoid to even to even walk but I have to get back because I don't want to slip and bust my face or my camera or anything like that so I'm gonna head back oh Jesus and uh, yeah vlogging on a slippery surface is not a good idea but I'm gonna come back here another day and I'll, I'll bring you over to see the sand volcano because I really want to see it, but I'm just not up for risking my life today. Also, there's tons of barnacks and stuff here. I might come out. Blah, 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 blah. I might come out to the coast someday and pick some barnacks because uh, they're really nice, and I'd love to make like a seafood chowder or something out of it. And yeah, maybe that'll be a video. And in, in, oh shit, I just stood in a puddle. But maybe that'll be a video in the future. It's even harder getting back than it was going over there. I'm genuinely scared <laughs> for, for my for my health. <laughs> I'm not even joking. But there's so many cool things here. Look at this. Like, look at this little pond. It's so beautiful. I'm sticking to the grippy rocks. Because the other ones will kill you. Oh, really there. <laughs> I was not expecting this. <laughs> I don't think many people were expecting it to be like this, but uh, it's an adventure anyway. It's a bit of an adventure, so... Who cares? This is crazy to me because like this beach is only a couple of miles away from where I live and I never knew it existed. No one been shown around, shown the history and the geology of it and it's actually so interesting. I feel like I feel like such a dumbass for not coming here before. Got sand all over my phone and my microphone and all my gear. It was totally worth it. It was pretty cool. The British has, um, <laughs> <laughs> she says, <laughs> not this speech. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the So it was very well fortified around England, but here, concerned. Then around 1798, the Imperial Empire, 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 the Imperial and it was made to be bomb-proof. The reason there's a hole here in the side of it is because back in the 1920s they tried to blow it up with dynamite but they weren't very successful. And you can see here some of the rocks from the from the dynamite they're just left scattered here. Well we can go in at our, at our own risk but um, yeah it looks a little bit dodgy. Super cool as well and <laughs> they think that this was either the toilet or the ammunition store. They're not 100% sure but um, yeah. Take a walk around this little uh, little fort. It looks really clean, doesn't it? Really modern. Yeah. We're going to be wrapping up here fairly soon, but uh, I think I've had a, I think I've had a pretty pretty interesting day so far. Got to see a couple of different types of rock. Got to see the Napoleonic Fort. So this course is actually turning out to be pretty interesting. I wasn't 100 percent sure when I started because it was something to do <laughs> to kill the boredom, but it's actually turning out to be cool. So uh, yeah, I like that. And I know this isn't like my normal videos. This might be a bit nerdy or a bit uh, a bit off topic, I guess, to my normal videos. But it's kind of I don't know. It's interesting to me, and uh, maybe it's interesting to you too. I don't know. So I'm doing this course for the next 10 weeks. This is my second week. So there probably will be more videos like this. So. <laughs> Apologies if you don't like this kind of content, but I do, so that's what I'm going to make. It's starting to rain pretty heavy now. Oh, good morning. Today I'm actually going to be in the bog. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, in Ireland the bog is a place where you go and cut turf. Uh, some people call the bog the toilet. That's not what it is. Yeah, the bog in Ireland is where you go, you cut turf, 
you stack it, you dry it, you bring it home and you burn it in your fire. It's a fuel source we've been using in Ireland for years and years and years and years, like way back in the day, even back like before famine times. So we've been using this for hundreds of years, but I'm not actually going to cut turf at the bog. We're going to the bog as part of the course that I'm doing. I think we're going to learn about some of the geology and like the makeup of the bog, how it preserves things. I think this is what I'm presuming, I'm not 100% sure, but uh, I've got my willies on and I'm ready to go, ready to kick some ass. I, I bet I look like a pure farmer. How's the going? Oh, we are, we're ready for the bog, lads. So I'm here in my Asta. Uh, yeah, I know that sounds like a rude word, but that is really what it's called. My Asta. My Asta is famous for the West Clare Railway, which ran along here years and years ago. Uh, you can see, the, you can see the, the remainders of it here. So you can see some of the old tracks of the West Clare Railway here. It used to run from Ennis all the way back to Kilkee, so the tracks used to go back all the way back there. And here you can see some of the old rail carriages. Because there's so much history to the West Clare Railway, I think I'm going to do a separate video. Not today, obviously, but um, I'll do it at some stage because there is a lot of history here. I'm a little bit early, I'm going to be waiting here for about half an hour. So I might as well show you around a little bit. Officially in the bog. It's a little bit wet underfoot, but it's not too bad. Oh, I'm starting to get flashbacks from when I was a kid. <laughs> so I think that's all from us from the bog. Uh, I've learned some interesting stuff. I was taught not to record, so I kind of didn't. There's a lot to learn from the bog. Things I didn't know, like this used to be a lake. So this is a raised bog, and it's about 10,000 years old, and it used to be a lake. I never knew that. It was all water at one stage, and it just overgrew, and just kept growing and growing, and became a bog. <laughs> this is my first bog vlog. Bog vlog. Another thing about the bog is, because it's on a lake, the ground is like moving underneath us. When there was a group of us together, it was like the entire ground was just shaking underneath us. So. I thought that was kind of cool. A little bit scary, but cool. And there's lots of rare animals that come here as well. There's the front, uh, white-fronted Greenland geese that come here every winter because it gets too cold in Greenland. And they nest over in the, in the bog. That's amazing to me. It's been a pretty interesting couple of weeks. There's some things I haven't been expecting to like, but I've ended up liking them. I've always had some kind of interest in geology and history and things like that, but when it's more local, I can relate to it more. And like I said before, I know it's not my normal type of content. But there is going to be more of this content coming in the next few weeks. Um, it's not going to be all this. I am going to try and mix it up. If you're liking my videos, hit like, subscribe down below, and uh, just let me know what you think of the videos. So if there's anything you think I'm doing wrong or right or whatever, just let me know down below. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next episode, uh, which will probably be somewhere, somewhere outside of the classroom. See, so yeah, I've been waving now for ages, so goodbye.